Good morning, this is Alamon, and welcome back for episode 8 of Taiwan Typhoon. I've been having some computer problems lately, I put that in a channel update, uh, and in fact, I have already recorded an episode 8 and an episode 9, but there were problems, shall we say. So, uh, thankfully, this is not Iron Man, so I was able to go right back to my save from this point. And forward we shall go. I think I'm going to keep these cogs, I've been very tempted to uh, disband them. But we will keep those because they cost so little, and if we have any revolts over here or some kind of event spawns rebels, because that's much more likely than actually having, uh, you know, unrest that causes a revolt, um, we should be able to ferry troops. We should have that capability. Uh, let's see, we don't want viceroys or any of the rest of these for now. Get rid of that. Uh, yeah, we need to let some time tick by so that we can pay off these loans. And once we paid off the loans, we're going to build up the trade fleet more. Now, one thing that I learned in the uh, the Lost episodes... Ah, wait, yes, we do have a mission right now, don't we? So, will you accept... No, you won't accept a royal marriage, so... That means we should just get rid of that mission. Uh, actually, wait, do we have... We do have colonial enthusiasm, so... Uh, yes, actually, this is a good time get rid of the mission, because then in one year from now, Colonial Enthusiasm will have already expired. And then we can get it again easily. Although, honestly, we're not going to be colonizing for a little bit, because, uh... Sorry, I'm, I'm scattered all over the place right now. Basically, we're having a lot of trouble colonizing. We really need to build up our fleet more. Uh, get more trade income coming in. So what I started to say was, uh, one thing I learned was I thought that your capital acted the same as a main trading port. In other words, I thought that you could collect from trade in your capital without taking a penalty to your trade power. That's apparently wrong. I I'm not sure if I have always been wrong about this or if this is a change that was made after... Uh, I think it was 1.7 that introduced main trading ports. And gosh, 1.11's coming out in a couple days, too. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so I moved my main trading port, and that really screwed things up. Because it drastically reduced my trade income. And so I used console commands to give myself 300 diplomatic points to move the uh, trading port back into the Canton node from the Philippine... Or sorry, from the Manila trade node. Uh, which I would not normally do, but I figured because I misunderstood the game mechanic and it was going to really mess up the series by uh, clamping our income far down, that it would be worth doing. But now that I've traveled back in time, and we are in this alternate time stream, uh, I don't have to worry about that at all. Okay, so at this point, yes, we can repay all the loans. We have a safe enough buffer here. I've had it happen a number of times that I've paid off all my loans, uh, without having much of a m money buffer, and then an event has popped up that will cost, you know, 30 ducats or something, and then I have to take out another loan, and it just dries up your inflation unnecessarily. Alright, so we have the Colonized Manila mission. We're not going to... No, 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 we're going to take that mission, because that's actually where we're going to colonize next. Uh, it's just going to be a little bit of a wait. I'm going to wait until that hits 30 ducats, and start building a bark... Uh, actually, morale of armies, I'm not happy that that has gone. Uh, you know what, let's actually also put a national focus in military. Because uh, this next tech is going to be really good, but after that, we hit a little bit of a plateau where we don't need to surge ahead. And also, like I said, we have no interest in fleshing out these ideas any further. Uh, because all that that'll really give us is, well, first of all, global tariffs we do not care about at all. Uh, another colonist? Well, we already have two colonists that I'm not using right now. We can't use two at once. It costs too much money. And naval force limit modifier? That will be great eventually. But not yet. Cast his belly against primitives? Also not something that would be useful to us for now. Uh don't care about advisors, because we don't have the money. Royal marriage. Yeah, sure. That's fine. It doesn't hurt our legitimacy at all, and in fact, we'll help it tick up a little faster. 
Wow, is that bad? Plus 0.17 each year. How old's our monarch? Only 20 years old. Wow, how did that happen? And you are... Uh, oh yeah, 9 years old. Yeah, not much min power being gained. Now, I'd love to take trade as our next idea group, but we can't because there's the restriction where you cannot... Um, yeah, at most, 50% of your idea groups may be in the same category. So that means that uh, for idea number two and three, I guess, we have to go outside of diplomatic ideas. Uh, this is available. We will take it because that'll increase our trade efficiency. I also forgot to start building that bark. You know what? We'll just build two at once. Uh, you know, I've, I've kind of been trying to keep about a 10 ducat buffer. But we're, cl we're close enough. I think it'll be okay. Uh, this is a good level, but we don't need to use our military quite yet. So we're actually going to hold off on this until we are ready to start colonizing again. Uh, so let's see, we are collecting in both of those nodes, that is correct. And the fleet is protecting in Canton, right? Yes, that's correct. And as we build more ships, we will uh, add them to that fleet that's patrolling. Actually, just out of curiosity. Alright, so we just finished a tick. So if we say protect trade, so it adds... So wait, did that immediately... No, no, that number's not right. But it's actually showing up as if... having more ships will actually cost us money. Alright, in that case, we'll let these two finish. Because we just lose money otherwise. Start protecting trade. Uh, we're going to... Take this tech, upgrade our unit. Uh, and actually, I'm going to want to build two more infantry. I'll repeat again that, uh, well, it would be optimal for us to get at least one unit of cavalry right now, but I'm not going to do that because it would not really be in keeping with the spirit of uh, kind of an island hopping campaign. So possibly for the entire game, we're just not going to use cavalry. I think the game is a lot more interesting and a lot more fun when you uh, have some self-imposed restrictions like that. So anyway, uh, two more units here. Our manpower is kind of in the pits. I mean, we've had a few years of complete peace. But it's only about half full. Actually, almost exactly half full right now. All right, uh, I'm going to let the treasury build up a bit more. Philippines, our income has plummeted. Usually, uh, well, I noticed when I was recording other stuff, that was because the uh, Dai Viet, or sorry, not the Dai Viet, the Langxiang were either increasing or decreasing what they were doing here. That is not the case here. It looks like Sunda is taking the lion's share. What is that from? Yeah, just merchant present and trade from downstream. Um, wow, this is not fun. We are gaining so few admin points per month right now. Uh, we just have to pay the money. So uh, this next step is a little bit arduous and a little bit dangerous. Once we have built up enough of a war chest, we're going to uh, crank up our army maintenance to full and then just leapfrog our way slowly to Manila. And 
The aggressiveness is so incredibly high in the Philippines that very likely we will get fights in both of these provinces. And uh, all of these have populations of 7,000, which means that we only flank them by one. So on average, we are probably going to lose over 1,000 units per battle. So um, I expect to lose somewhere around 4,000 manpower just getting to Manila before we even start talking about colonizing. Of course, the uh, alternative would be to try to ferry our way down there. But that would be even more suicidal. Because we could only do it two units at a time. And, uh, I mean, I'm definitely not building six more cogs just for one uh, movement. And even then, they would probably rise up. We get the minus two. Uh, what, what do you call that, really? It's not straight crossing, just landing penalty? I don't know. Well, I'd like this to be a bit higher, but I'm also starting to feel awfully impatient. Let's say January, I crank up the maintenance, then we wait another couple months for the morale to tick up. Alright, maintenance up. Still making about one ducat. We do have a general. Eh, I think that's probably enough to work off of for one battle. Two shock, that's good. I mean, it's not good, but it's, uh, it's okay at this stage of the game. <sighs> yeah, so 1,500 we just lost. And they recover uh, men very, very slowly. Okay, gain trader, sure, whatever. I should really make more use of the feature where you can say, like, never show me this pop-up again. Because things like that, sure, an advisor appears... It generally makes no difference. Usually makes no difference. Alright, uh, I think at this point we can just say Consolidate Regiments. So does that put the weak one on the end? Yes, it does. And I'm totally fine with that, as long as we have full strength regiments doing the bulk of the fighting. Ooh, that's a great roll. Still, though, lost almost 1,500. Yeah, we should wait a few months. And of course, this costs money too, reinforcing the units. I want to make sure that we have at least seven full strength units. And then it's okay if the uh, guy on the end isn't in great shape. Alright, we'll wait one more month. So, uh, as anticipated, we did get three battles. And lost about 4,500 manpower. But we are immediately now going to start colonizing. I sure hope that this recording isn't getting corrupted. Because that was what happened uh, with this episode 8 last time. And then episode 9 was... Uh, it was okay. But because episode 8 was corrupted, I didn't want to have a gap. Yeah, we don't want to take any of these missions. All 
Oh, yes, I forgot to uh, put this... Oh, no, 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 it's actually already quite far down, isn't it? Okay, so I actually want to put that slider up a bit. Something like that. And uh, actually, we can put down the army maintenance of not, not terribly much. But uh, we should have enough morale. Now, the next tech level, if I remember right, gives us, um, yeah, tactics and a big bonus to infantry shock. So this will be a big one. I think this is the one that'll really make us uh, not have to worry about fighting natives in the future. It does bug me uh, that... Oh, that was funny how it uh, just turned from a kind of Conestoga wagon into uh, that ship there. That was a little silly. But yeah, it bugs me that we have this uh, very European-looking settler here. And yet it looks like we have a Mesoamerican pyramid, which I guess is a result of picking the uh, South American graphics here. Okay, lost our general. We do need a general. Hopefully this one's not going to be terrible. Um, when I rolled in my other alternate timeline that I discarded here, I got a 0010, which is about as bad as you could possibly get. Oh no, that guy's great. 2231. I mean, that's, that's better than I would have expected for whatever abysmal army tradition we must have. Uh, yeah, always just lose the prestige. Who cares about prestige? It affects morale, I guess, but... I mean, there's very little else that we have to worry about right now. Oh, I guess it does affect trade power, huh? But we're actually making 1.3 ducats from trade right now. Definitely a much healthier balance sheet than we had before. I could actually crank up. What if I put this on full? Okay, we would be losing a fair bit. Let's just uh, get this to maybe minus 0.10. That's close enough. Yeah, and of course it's going to fluctuate as our trade income fluctuates. So there is, of course, the trick of, uh, you know, recalling the colonist, sending the colonist, recalling the colonist, sending the colonist. But the population here is too high for that to be anywhere near worthwhile. Uh, unless we were to wipe out the population, but uh, again, I'm really trying not to do that much in this playthrough. Because, you know, the point is not to do the whole European style, uh, you know, kill all the savages kind of awful stuff. It's more to bring the Austronesian peoples under this uh, unified federation. Or at least that's uh, how I am helping myself to sleep at night doing my colonial ventures here. It looks like the Ming are starting to explode again. The Dali are in dire straits. Uh, yet yeah, don't care about viceroys. <laughs> oh, yeah, this isn't very good. Yeah, we'll we'll just have to um accept the loss of population. All these little tiny jeans. Where are your cores? Oh yeah, wow. That's a big bite out of you. But uh, one reason this makes me giggle a little bit is the uh, juxtaposition of yen with jin, because uh, add a g to the end of that, you have uh, yen jing, which is the word for eye or eyes in Mandarin. And I guess if we ever need to uh, charge a mobile device, just get fleet basing rights with the T, right? And I'm pretty sure that... Uh, oh, wait, I, th I tried to pause here. Um, well, I don't want to lose that much inflation. 
Yeah, we're just gonna have to do this one. That's okay. What was I trying to say? Uh, yeah, so at least one reading of Huai. Uh, I think with fourth tone, falling tone, Huai is like rotten. So, uh, that's kind of funny too. I am not at all an expert on Chinese. I didn't study too much of it, but uh, it is a very fun language. Uh, Ming, by the way, which is a rising tone, Ming means bright. And we actually can see the character uh, in their emblem here. So the character for bright, Ming, has a sun on the left and a moon on the right. Which I guess is also fitting with the whole idea of Celestial Empire and the, uh, you know, Emperor um, something something with the sun and the heavens something something. I, I don't know. I'm not really an expert on the Chinese folk religion aspect of, uh, you know, traditional imperial, you know, basis of power in China. That is terrible name placement, isn't it? Oh, poor Korea. But you grabbed a province up here, I think. Hard to see. But yeah, that definitely looks... Well, actually, we can see it's not a thick line there, so they did definitely grab something there from the Tianzhou. Uh, Takeda doing okay. With that gold mine, man. <sighs> do we have yes we do have colonial enthusiasm uh yes so this is the time that we want to take a mission and cancel it all right and i think uh this has actually run a little bit long for an episode so we'll stop it here next episode fingers crossed we will finish off manila and that'll put us on much stronger footing because keep in mind manila as a uh, important natural harbor. Yeah, so that'll be very good for collecting from that node. All right, I've been Alamon. Thanks uh, for watching. Good night, sleep tight, and don't let the grayskin bite. Bye-bye.